We welcome you to World Class Sunday School. As always, it's a pleasure to have you join us as we continue to read and search God's word for God's truth. Uh, let us go in prayer. Lord, we thank you again for this time to share in your word. We, we just give you praise and honor. We realize the importance of your word and we just have a desire to learn more about you so we can serve you better. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, we're continuing in our fall quarter, which is entitled God's Law is Love. And here in our first unit, which is entitled Love Completes, Law Falls Short, the subject of our lesson is Jesus Prevents Two Stonings. And uh, we are continuing in the Gospel according to John. Today's lesson is coming from the 8th chapter, verses uh, 1 through 11, and then verses 56 through 59. We have two outlines that's going to guide us today. The first one is a woman's cause to rejoice. That's so John 8th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And the second outline is Abraham's cause to rejoice. John 8th chapter, verses 56 through 59. And continuing in the Gospel of John, our lesson today just picks up where we left off in our last session. But we're following here in John, we're following Jesus, who is the Son of God, we are following his message and his ministry. Now his conflict with the religious leaders who denied his claim as the son of God moved to uh, silence him at any cost, even to the point of killing him. And our lesson takes place during the Feast of the Tabernacle or, or the Feast of the Tents, which was a celebration to one, give thanks to God, a thanksgiving to God for, for the harvest. And second, to commemorate their freedom from Egypt. And during this time, some of the Jews lived in tents outside of the city, which was a reenactment of the 40 years that uh, they spent in the wilderness. But our lesson uh, picks up here in uh, chapter 8. At the, at the end of, of this day's celebration, it says in chapter 7, verse, the last verse in chapter 7, verse 23, it says, And every man went unto his own house. That was the, the conclusion of chapter 7. So chapter 8 is where our lesson uh, begins today and we're going to look at a woman's cause to rejoice. First we're going to look at Jesus prepared to teach and in verse 1 it says Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. Okay the Mount of Olives uh, was where Jesus spent time with his father. He would all, often go uh, into a secluded place to be in God's presence to pray. And the Mount of Olives, this is the, the place where, where he was praying the night before he was betrayed by Judas and arrested by the Roman soldiers. So it says he went into this place to the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. Jesus was about his father's business. Remember the Bible showed us when he was 12 years old when his parents couldn't find him after going to, to the temple and they came back and found him among the leaders and teachers and he told his parents at that point that he, he must be about his father's business and that's what he was doing preaching and teaching the gospel, and he was, he was about his father's business. 
At, the, at this point, his, his ministry had really grown to a point where there were, there were many gathered to hear his teaching. And then they said, change of curriculum is what we see here in verse 3, the first part of verse 3, 3.8. 3 8 says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Okay, now, Jesus was preaching and teaching the gospel. The scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman that had been taken in adultery. And we see that in verse, verse 3 and 4. Now, they say that, that she had, this woman was taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst of, of them, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now, uh, adultery was a sin punishable by death in the Old Testament. Uh, and, and they said that she was caught in the act. So let's look at, let's, I want to read what the law says in Leviticus 20 and 10. Leviticus 20 and 10 says, And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed the adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. And, and the law is reading that, that both parties, the man and the woman, is to be put to death. But now we see here that the scribes and the Pharisees only brought the woman to Jesus. So we, we don't know what a man is. We don't know why they didn't bring him. All we know is that only the woman is here. And, and uh, we see, uh, we, know, we know that, that what the scribes and the Pharisees are, are plotting to do. But we, we know also that they're in, in, the, in the culture, Jewish culture, at this time was a double standard. So, and, and women were looked down on. And that's, that's why there was a double standard, but there's, there's also a double standard in, in our society today. And I'm gonna give you an example. If a woman has more, multiple lovers, she's labeled as a whore. But a man can have multiple lovers and he's, he's uh, honored. He, he's called a playboy, one with many notches in his belt. So it's a, it's a double standard. But if it's a sin for a woman, then it's a sin for a man in God's eyesight. Because God is no respecter of person. But anyway, we, we, go, we look and we see that, we, and we know that the scribes and the Pharisees were, were plotting and uh, to, to, and they were trying to trap Jesus. So it goes on to say in verse 5, it says, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. And we just read the law. And we know what the law said. And the law said, and they, they knew. They knew that the, the, what the law said, that they should be stoned. But the law said both should be stoned. But they only brought, brought the woman. Now we know as far as the religious leaders were concerned, the, the question had nothing to do with the woman. They said, they said okay, we, we, uh, she was caught in the act and the law said that she should be stoned, but, but what do you say? That's what they said in, in the latter part of verse five. What, but what sayest thou? What do you say? If they had really had the law on their hearts, they would have had the man and the woman there if they were if they were really concerned about justice. But we know that we know what their motives were, and Jesus knew what their motives were. They were only interested in trapping Jesus to discredit him. We we found it out, and we knew that from the beginning that all this uh, 
that they were doing was, was just a ploy, trying to trap Jesus and find fault in him. <laughs> but, and, and this really shows Jesus' long suffering and compassion. Now, I was nowhere near this scene, but when we went reading this, man, I, I was really fed up with these scribes and Pharisees. But, but Jesus showed compassion and continued love for them, even though he knew that they had bad intentions for it. And, and so we have to, we have to struggle with, with our feelings sometimes. And we'll let that old sin nature dictate to us, but, but we shouldn't. We, we, should, we should be like Jesus, and Jesus is a great example for us to, to really put forth the effort to, to not to look down on people because of, of things that they're doing. Reading on in verse 6, it says, this they said, tempting him. We, we talked about how they trying to trap him and discredit him. So they, they tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, okay, we, we had this woman, we've She's been caught in the act of adultery. We, the Mosaic law says that, that she should be stoned. So what do you say? And when they asked it, that question, it, the Bible said that he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, we don't know what he wrote. But you know, studying this lesson, uh, reading different commentaries, there's a lot of speculation on what Jesus actually wrote. But we don't know. So we're not going to speculate. All we know is that he wrote on the ground. Now, knowing all things, Jesus, knowing all things, Jesus knew the sins of her accusers. Every, everyone that was there that was a part of bringing the woman to Jesus, he knew all their sins. All of us are guilty. All are guilty. And we all deserve death. Not only, not only the accusers, not only the woman, the accusers, and we also, all, all of us, all of us are guilty. All of us are guilty. And we have to, we have to uh, be mindful of our position. Okay, let me, let's read on. We, let's read on. When he ignored them, they kept asking, according to verse 7. Okay, and then he, he, it says, He lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. <laughs> now, now they, were, they were trying to tra trap Jesus. And Jesus' uh, reply to them was, He who is among you without sin, let him cast the first stone. Here in verse, verse 9, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience. Let's, let's stop right there. When Jesus said, he who is among you without sin, let him cast the first stone. They were, and they, the, the scripture shows us that they were convicted by their own conscience. And look, that, that's, a good, that's a good place to be. When we are convicted of our wrongdoing, that's a good time to repent. That's a good time to repent. A good place to repent is right here for these scribes and Pharisees. Showing, showing you how much Jesus loved them, he's giving them an opportunity now to have a change of heart. 
the Holy Spirit will bring us to a point of being convicted by our conscience. And that's, that's part of his ministry. That's part of his work in us to bring us to a point of conviction. And, and when we are convicted of our wrongdoing, 1 John 1 9 tells us how to handle it. Those of us who are Christian, but those who, uh, who, who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's a perfect time to, to surrender to God. And so, so Jesus had brought them to this perfect point. And you know, the parable of the, the Pharisees and the tax collector shows the true doctrine of justification by faith. You remember the parable when these two men were praying, one a Pharisee, one a tax collector. The Pharisee said, God, I thank you that I'm not like, like them. I tithe every week, I do good. Uh, uh, to others uh, uh, and, and all that stuff and then and, and showing that he was lifted up in pride but the tax collector smote his chest and said Lord forgive me a sinner the illustration uh, shows how a sinner can be declared justified before God through repenting faith when a sinner received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God's divine righteousness is imputed into their account. Just, just as is given to us when we accept uh, the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sin. That's what, that's what it showed. Okay, so it goes on to say, it says, they which uh, heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning with the eldest, even unto the least, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in, in the midst. What we see here, we see a life-changing lesson. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Okay, so here, here's, here's, the, here's the, the thing here uh, that we see in, in, uh, in, in this verse, verses 10 and 11. We see here that, that we are in no position, as those accusers were, to point our finger at anyone. All, all have sinned. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of God's glory. And then it goes on to say none is righteous. No, not one. And so, so we, don't, we don't have, uh, we are not in no position to, to point our fingers at anyone. And he, Jesus says, where are your accusers? No man, she says, he says, has no man condemned thee? She said, no man. And then Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, Jesus could have condemned her. Uh, he could have condemned all of us. But rather, he chose to go to the cross to pay our sin debt and to pay her sin debt. That's, that's what he chose to do. When he had every right to condemn her and to condemn us. Because we've all sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. And we all deserve death. But because of his love and compassion for humankind, he chose not to condemn, but to give his life a ransom for our sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go on. Uh, and that, that really, that's, uh, really covers uh, the first portion of the first outline of our lesson. Okay, outline number two is eight. Now that, that was, okay, that was, that was her, that was the woman's cause to rejoice because God chose not to condemn her but, but to save her. And we can rejoice for that same reason. 
because he chose not to condemn us, but save us. Now we're going to see why Abraham had a reason to rejoice. And that moved, that our lesson moves from, from verse 11 in chapter 8 to verse 56. And here in verse 56 we see Jesus' day. We're going to read verse 56 and 57. Verse 56 says, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Now this, Jesus is, is, te is still teaching after this incident. He's still teaching in, in the temple. And, and he's, he says that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. And, and he saw it and was glad. Verse 57 said, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Well now, Jesus was speaking, uh, talking on a, a spiritual level, but they understanding was nowhere near uh, anything spiritual, I put it that way. And they, cause they were all carnal. They, they, they weren't thinking spiritually at all because they, they were trying to, uh, they did not accept Jesus and who he said he was. Now, the Bible says that Abraham saw Christ's day afar off. Now, what does that mean? It means that Abraham didn't know when the promised Messiah would come. But he believed God and, and uh, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He knew that God had promised a Savior, a Messiah. And he, he knew that someday that that, that prophecy would, would come to pass. Now, now, this was centuries before Jesus Christ came on the scene. But by him saying that Abraham saw his day afar off meant that Abraham believed the promise of God that he would send a, a savior. And when Abraham believed God, he had faith in the promise of God, then his faith was accounted to him for righteousness. That, that's back in the Old Testament. But in the, in the New Testament, salvation or justification comes by the same means. Now, Abraham looked forward to Christ the day that Christ would come. Now, we are blessed. We can look back to, well, let me put it this way. Abraham looked forward to the cross. Well, we look back to the cross. But the cross is where those in the Old Testament was justified. And the cross is where those of us in the New Testament are justified. We are both justified because of our faith in Jesus Christ. He believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. They said, they said you don't, did you see Abraham? You're not, you're not that old. So Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, and we know when we see this, that means pay attention to what I'm saying. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And this statement, I am, Jesus is uh, declaring himself to be Yahweh, to be God, to be equal with God. The, the uh, eternal God who, who revealed himself in the Old Testament to the Jews. That's, that's, who, that's what he's claiming here. When he says, he says, Abraham was, but I am. And then it says, then they took up stone to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed back. So Leviticus, I want to read this to you. Leviticus, the... Uh, Leviticus 24 and 16 says, 
and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. That's why they picked up Psalm, because they are accusing Jesus of blasphemy. But we know that, that Jesus Christ is who he say he is. And we know that, that the reason that they could not stone him was because his hour had not yet come. They could not, not kill him because, before God's perfect time and plan was not, it was not yet ready. There would be no deviation from what God had planned or promised. And we know from reading the, the prophecy that everything happened according to God's plan. Abraham had come to rejoice because he saw God's promise. We can rejoice because we see God's promise. Abraham looked forward to the cross. We look back to the cross. It's the cross of Jesus Christ that justifies all men. Another stoning prevented by Jesus, his own. So he prevented the, the woman's stoning and he prevented his own. Lord, we thank you for this time. We're just so grateful, Lord, to, that you reveal your, your word to us and give us an understanding of uh, what you are teaching. We, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Well, again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you in our next session. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.